prophecies, revelations, economic collapse, martial law, social and civil, aliens, human hybrids, Nephilim, the great deception, world chaos, tsunamis. You want to stay tuned for special edition, end time revelations with Pastor Henry Schaefer and Pastor Steve Hall. CSRA, welcome to another episode of Project Seer. I'm your host of the program here today, along with my uh, the other host of the program, Steve Hall. It's good to have you in the studio with us. And it is great to be back in the studio. Boy, has things changed in the last couple of weeks. The world is upside down on its head. I love that, don't you? <laughs> Jesus I mean, is Jesus coming is soon. Jesus is coming. Amen. And we've got Ryan Shotgun with us today. We got this young man over here called Bill George, Pastor Bill George. Good to have you again over here with Amen. us. Amen. It's good to be here. And I have to say, when I was making the switch, I could hear I had a reset program was running. It was hard to make that switch. Uh, but yes. I had to wait just a second because I was talking about my dad. Uh, one time came in, and I, I had done something to disappoint him, and I thought he was going to beat me to death. But he didn't beat me to death. No, he, he didn't. Instead, he just said, <laughs> of all the people he thought he could trust, he thought he could trust me. I had gotten in trouble. Oh, and yeah. I just wanted the people to know he didn't beat me to death. Putting that guilt trip <laughs> then on I switched. Me. I switched it after he. They found out he didn't beat me to death. <laughs> yeah, we wouldn't want to thank you that you were uh, been beat to death and still here. <laughs> September the fourteenth. It's September the fourth. I mean, when September? I say September, I'm going December. I, I already had this planned out in my head. Yeah. Too. Okay. December the fourteenth, uh, twenty seventeen. It's just a little after two o'clock. So you listen any other time, uh, and this is this would be actually Thursday. Huh? Thursday. That's right, Thursday. And uh, so if you listen any other time, you're listening to a rebroadcast of Project Sierra. I want to welcome in on our listening audience. In just a moment, you can go there to our Facebook, and you can just click on that and uh, make, a, make a comment there. We'll read them out over the air, but God bless you for Which tuning Facebook in. Which Facebook are we on today, We're going to be on uh, WCC 999 FM Facebook page, and, of course, Henry Schaefer's as well. But share it around. Share it to all your neighbors, all your friends. We're getting ready to take care of that, and... If you'll take the program from here, brother, then I'll take care of the little business work here. All right. Yeah, we do want to thank all of our loyal listeners and wish every one of you a very Merry Christmas. And remember, it is the time for giving. So if you want to give to Project Seer, make Ooh, a donation, you can go to our webpage, cwchrist.com, uh, and you can see uh, ways to contribute towards you. So we thank all of you that support the program and support the radio station. God bless you. Uh, Merry Christmas. And so let's get started because the world is upside down. Brother George, the world has gone crazy ever since Trump announced last week that Jerusalem was going to be the capital. And it's already the capital, so what's the big deal? Yeah. It was a big deal when we recognized it and decided, hey, we're going to move our embassy to the capital so we can be snuggled up with, uh, uh, you know, the other big white houses right, or exactly. the big capital buildings that are there already so what's the big deal the big deal is united states should have shut their mouth and the islamic world could have just stayed in their own little corner <laughs> but now we done uh picked a fight by telling them we're going to jerusalem and recognize it as the capital of jerusalem uh for israel and uh so but this infa infada intifada uh has been called it's like the third one there was one in 1980s. Uh -huh. There was one in 19. There's one in 1980, 1990, and then in 2000. So this would maybe be the fourth intifada mm -hmm. that they're calling, and uh, this thing has broke open all across and all around the world. Muslims are marching in the streets. They are burning uh, uh, flags. You know, you know, American flags, Israeli flags. They are burning pictures of, of our President Trump. Pictures of uh, of uh, the Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. They're just really, really upset because they feel like they have no recourse now that Israel just has taken over everything mm -hmm. and it's been handed to them and they have no other thing to do. They try to fight back, you know, fight in the streets, launch their little missiles. And and uh, the big thing is somebody said, well, that's not such a big deal. It'll calm down. It will come down eventually. Mm -hmm. But then Erdogan from Turkey, this is the big thing. Uh -huh. To me, this is the big one. You know, Turkey's right north of Israel. 
Turkey and me and Brother Schaefer was just mentioning this a while ago with Pastor Bill George, is that since it's right north, when the Bible talks about Gog and Magog from the north, we are looking also at Turkey. Somebody says, is Russia, Russia can be part of it, maybe the mm-hmm. backer, because Russia is sending arms and That's all it. kind of equipment mm-hmm. into Turkey, and Turkey has sent out the call. Y'all know what the call said? If you want to get Israel to listen, we got to get together. And he has called, as a matter of fact, this was yesterday. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, he invited all the Islamic leaders to come to Turkey, and they would discuss it and figure out a united plan, guys. You hear me? A plan that would unite them. And and listen, Iran already pledged two battalions, or whatever they call their groups of soldiers. They got two of them that just can't wait to start fighting against Israel. Mm Mm-hmm. It makes you wonder what would happen, though, if all of a sudden all those missiles uh, that they were promised from Russia, something happened, they couldn't get them. I think they'd kind of change their tune a little bit and be a little bit more quiet. <laughs> yeah, and didn't you say something? Now, see, I hadn't caught this end of this side of this thing, Brother George, but didn't you say that you had heard that Russian uh, Vladimir Putin was saying they're pulling out of Syria? Tell right. us about that. I, I didn't um, catch that I, I saw that on the news the other day that uh, Putin said that we're going that they were pulling out of Syria, the Russian, some of the Russian troops out of Syria, but if terrorists arise again, we'll be back. And we had talked, uh, I don't know if it was last week or the week before, about the, the possibility of Russia allowing Syria. Uh, Turkey and I mean uh, Syria and Iran and Turkey come to do the fighting and then as they lose so many people Russia thinking well we can come in and take over now because yeah we're the head honchos so here's my let me just throw some of my take onto that because Mm -hmm. since you told me that my mind starts running with this stuff and uh, when 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 they came in to Syria when Russia Vladimir Putin sent his military into Syria it was in support of the dictator mm-hmm. uh, uh, Basad, right? Right. Assad. And we were there to try to overthrow Assad. So mm-hmm. when Russia came in, they were directly opposed to our freedom fighters, if you want to call right. them that, trying to get freedom from Assad's uh, regime and then maybe install some kind of an American regime. We've mm-hmm. always got a motive. America's always got a motive, right. so I'm not throwing that out. So when he says terrorists, guess who he's talking about? He's not talking about Hamas, and he's not talking about the jihadists. He's talking about those who's trying to overthrow Assad. Mm -hmm. So if America goes back in in the absence of Russia trying to bring terror, which is to throw overthrow Assad, then he's going to come in and stop it. If Israel tries to attack and overthrow, then Israel now is the terrorist. It's a total different mindset. Because if you're for those that were fighting against Assad, then you're directly opposed to America and Israel. Mm-hmm. So you under you kind of uh, to me it paints a total different picture than what he said in our minds. We say, oh, you know, if the if ISIS tries to come back, they're gonna come back. No, that's not what they're talking about. Yeah, <laughs> right, exactly. Uh, ISIS is just basically the excuse for them to have come in there and do all this stuff. You know, we talked. Uh, Pastor Schaefer mentioned about the, the fishing and the bait and stuff. You know that. ISIS was really just a bait to get all these countries to come together to work together. Yeah, and it's working. Right. And uh, now the bait uh, is not as prevalent as it was. And so they they act like they're backing off. But you know they're not backing off. They're waiting for opportunity. Erdogan has changed in the last several years, especially since the election of last year. I watched Mm -hmm. a special on Erdogan, and uh, this man uh, did a great job in the beginning of his presidency. But over the last several years, he began to lean heavy towards Islamic control over a free government control. And the the government, the the military, tried to overthrow Erdogan. And that was just last uh, 2016, tried to overthrow him because he was leaning so much toward the religious left or right. I don't know how you want to say that. Mm -hmm. But towards Islam and bringing Islamic tradition and ways back into Turkey. When the pro- former president before him, several of them uh, tried this and it didn't work because they wanted Turkey. The military was commissioned to keep Turkey free from Islamic takeover, mm-hmm. the, the religion of Islam to take over. So when they tried to oust Erdogan in 2016, it was because he was leaning too heavily. But Erdogan had got a lot of support that the military didn't know that he had or didn't or underestimate him so that he actually pulled out of that thing very strong but even now Erdogan's strong decisions to bring in Islam and make uh, Turkey 
let's just use the word caliphate, mm-hmm. the new caliphate, because it was uh, before the, the Byzantine Empire was mm-hmm. destroyed. It was the center of the caliphate. Mm-hmm. So Turkey is positioning itself by all of this upheaval that was uh, that that happened after Trump's announcement last week. He's drawing in all of these other nations saying, come to Turkey. Come, we'll go from here. We will decide as a unit what we're going to do. Brothers and sisters, if this is not prophecy coming. And, and another thing that we had we had mentioned was uh, never play chess with the Russians. Right. Because they're strategists to the hilt. That's I right. Mean, they're, they're head over heels into strategy and long term strategy of that. And you mentioned something maybe even last week. You want to reiterate it this week about him pulling out and letting Turkey and the others do the fighting. Well, I mean, it was, it's a. It's just common sense, you know. You, it's it's like the the bully in the playground that gets all the little guys stirred up to fight against each other, and when they're tired of beating on each other, he steps in and he starts beating them up, and they're all afraid of him then because he's the one that didn't, you know, won the fight. But it was actually all the little little guys that have been working. So I can see Russia looking at Turkey and Iran, and you know, well maybe they could do, maybe they can take Israel. Well, when that doesn't happen, um, maybe if we just put a little bit more towards it. Right now, uh, Israel, maybe if we lend air support, yeah, maybe Israel we, is weak now. Yeah. So let, now let's go in. But we know that it ain't going to happen that way. It, if we had to pick a dog in this fight, Israel's a dog I want to pick. You know, yeah, because I agree. Uh, you know, according to God's word, that's one that we need to to lift up and bless, and we'll be blessed because of it. Um, but you know, when you look at all the situations of things going on around the world and stuff, there's so much going on. Uh, here at home that's trying to distract i believe trump and, and his administration yeah. from what's going on across the world and there's so much foolishness that you just hate to even turn the news on to hit, to listen you know we need to be aware of things going on but you just hate to turn the news on because it's, there's so much uh stupidity draining the swamp <laughs> draining the swamp has turned into a a uh Pandora's box. Right. You never know what alligator or what kind of critter. Let's call it a critter. Let's call this iniquity that's, that's right. at the bottom of the cesspool. Let's call it just filled with critters we ain't never seen before, swamp heard of before. Monsters. Swamp monsters. Right. There, there we go. go. These swamp monsters ain't never been seen. They've been hiding. They've been hiding each other, covering each other. Uh-huh. And now that the drainage has done started to expose them, this is some ugly sin. Mm-hmm. This is some pedophile. This is murder. This is... It's, it's disgusting, but I talked a lot about this. It, it's adrenochrome. Uh-huh. Adrenochrome is a drug that is extracted from the base of the spine, uh, the top of the spine, base of the neck, where adrenaline will pool if somebody goes through severe trauma mm-hmm. and then they are killed. So what this adrenochrome is, this is mentioned in a movie. I've, I just learned this, y'all, yeah. is that, that some of our <coughs> most corrupt politicians – and most sick people in the world will have these children that disappear all around the world every year. And they will subject them to all of this sexual terror, physical abuse, and then they will eventually kill them to get the adrenochrome and inject it into their body. Because they say it is the best high that mm-hmm. you could ever get. And not only that, they, I know this is disgusting, but y'all have heard of spirit cooking. We've talked about spirit cooking here and on other programs. They're eating the flesh and drinking the blood of these same kids. Mm-hmm. And you say, oh, boy, that's a big rabbit hole right there. And it is. And somebody says, that, that, <laughs> that's, what, that's the monsters in the bottom of the swamp. Mm-hmm. That's what their high is. And, yeah. if you, and if you can't swallow Pizzagate, if you can't believe there's a pedophile ring going on in our government, then you just need to uh, – you're, you're not going to be able to buy the rest of it. I can tell you that. But, Shay, why don't you jump in here and help me out? I feel like I'm swimming in the deep water right here. Well, go ahead. I mean, if you're going to jump all over the place, go ahead and tell them about what's going on in Japan. Japan? Yeah, I just about, read, the, about the food. I mean. Okay, so in Japan, there's no law against so eating let me, no, So place. let me just okay, let me you, kind of set it up. I'm going to set it up. You know it. it. I know I'm going to set it up. Set it up. Brother, if I was going to go over to Japan and go out to one of the restaurants to eat. Yeah. And I'm saying, hey, I'm going to go over there, you know, next couple of months I'm planning to go. Yeah. And uh, they've told me about some really, really good restaurants. Okay. And is there anything that you could recommend sure. that I do or how I don't exotic, do or that I need that how, I need to be aware how of? How exotic of a food would you like to well, try? Well, you know, while I'm there, I want to try something I've never eaten before. You know, it's like when I went down to Florida. Mm-hmm. Went down to Florida. We, we did a, um, um, 
uh, firefighting. You know, we was down there in uh, um, St. Augustine. Okay. So I wanted, you know, first time I'd been in a St. Augustine. So we're going out that night. Want to go someplace I've never eaten before. So man, said, hey, come go with us. So we went out on the out on the ocean out there. You know, and I I ate a uh, what was it alligator tail. Mm. Okay. I mean, I, you know, I never eaten any of that yeah. before. Alligators. I wanted here. Let's try some of that. So if I go to Japan, yeah, yeah I want something I never tried. Can't get. It's going to be expensive. Tell me about it then. But there is no law against eating and consuming human flesh in Japan and in any of the Oriental nations. So there are people now that will sell their bodies to the restaurant. When I die, my body is coming to you. Get on downtown. And they will take your body and turn it into food to sell in the restaurant. Get on downtown. This is this is in the newspaper. Look it up. It's in the newspaper. <laughs> I read it out of a newspaper clipping, and there's nothing anybody can do. Nobody's even trying to do it, and they say they're selling it as fast as they can get it. So what they're human doing, meat. So what they're doing is they're saying, okay, one day I'm going to die. Yeah. So I can go ahead and sign the contract and with get, not the funeral home. That's right. Not I'm the with, home. with the restaurant. Exactly. And go ahead and they'll sign take care that, of my body. They'll take care of the body. And they'll go ahead and pay me now. That's right. You have the money now. For this here. Is there any, let, me, let me ask you this here. Do you get anything for size? Small guy, <laughs> medium size, big guy. I wonder if there's anything on monies like that. <laughs> or I you, don't know, but they probably <laughs> give more for Arnold Schwarzenegger than they would me. That's what I was just wondering. I'm just, I'm just trying to figure it out. Is there anything between what we're going to get uh, in that? That probably, that probably got it all worked out already. Yeah. But you, uh, yeah, it's I'm some kind sure. Of a table somewhere, I'm sure. And probably there's a waiting line. Probably you sign up, pay for that meal, and yeah. when that body becomes available, then it, and they said it, the meat's sold. The meat's yeah, it, it's it's a big thing. It could, but you know, go ahead. It takes us back to the days. That's of exactly Noah. what I was going to say right there. It, as it was in the days of Noah, yeah. and there was cannibalism according to uh, the Book of Enoch. It says they were eating and drinking. Yeah, well, but it didn't tell us what they were it, eating and drinking. Exactly, but the book of uh, Enoch pretty much spells it out. Yeah, for eat, us. eating flesh and drinking blood. Yeah, they cannibalized each other. Yeah, and so well, you know, the, you know, when, and when we when we start talking about that, I mean, we, I kind of like my eyes glossed back over, and said, "Man, this is some stuff that we've studied about about how the giants mm -hmm. they were so large." And that they had a food source, and they actually terrorized human beings. Yes. So, you know, and they were fright, so frightened of the giants. I mean, because mm -hmm. it's like, be five, four, thumb, I smell yeah. the blood of someone. It, it, yeah. You know, whatever. And they were tra chasing them down to, to the point where there were no humans, and they could start to consume themselves. That's right. Uh, giants fighting each other to consume well, you know, you, cannibalism. On one hand, um, I, I see stories and hear stories and stuff like that, and – there's, you know, there's some websites, Snopes and things that you can go on and it'll say this is false or that's false or this is real, that's real. But when you think about, I mean, cannibalism, part of the ca the reason for cannibalism was not only to eat y uh, your opponent, you know, would say, but you would hope that their, some of their traits yeah. would come in. So when we talk about dem demonology and things like that, um, it would make perfect sense that you, you're asking about size and stuff. I would think people would be more along the, the lines of, you know, their philosophy or, um, for instance, maybe a, a person had, you know, a large family, six kids, seven kids. We know that they eat uh, ground up rhinoceros horns and stuff for, for viral. So I could see them looking at the family tree and saying, yeah. I can get that, you know, uh, I can get that if I eat the body. <laughs> and smart if you eat the, the brain. brain. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> go ahead, brother. Having a good time with it. Whenever y'all tell me, go, go ahead, ahead, go, go. So listen, you know, you're talking about consuming, uh -huh. like the the traits or what uh -huh. have you, and demon not demons. Think, but so why is it a lot of them want to eat them alive? The zombie mm -hmm. craze. They, they eat them alive because the demons stay in, and mm -hmm. it doesn't leave the flesh. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? And then it goes. You see what I'm talking about? See, yeah. a demon don't want to stay in a dead body. It ain't right. gonna stay in a dead body. It's gonna right. leave. But if it's you're talking about consuming it live, mm -hmm. eating it fly, you know, cutting it, filleting uh -huh. it live, you know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, but the thing is, the demons stay with the flesh. The mm -hmm. life of the blood is the the yeah, that's it. The life I, of the the life the, of the, the flesh body. is the blood. That's right. Right. So right. what happens as long as that flesh is still soaked with blood and it's still live, it'll stay with it. That's how mm -hmm. it's the same thing as taking a a heart or a right. kidney or whatever. What do they transfer now? Anything. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Anything that they transfer in from one body, from one person to another person, mm-hmm. you know, even though it leaves that body and, and medically they know that it's got to be alive. Right. You know, and they've got so much time to keep that blood pumping through it or fresh or what have you, then they can put it in another person. So it's alive. And that that demon stays with that. And, of course, we know that people have personality changes. Some mm-hmm. do have personality changes, right? Yeah, after, after they have their implants or yeah. whatever, their uh, organ implant change. But, he, you know, in old times, in ancient times, they would eat the flesh of their enemies to gain the strength that, that yeah. their yeah. enemies had. That, and that, that would be it. Right. That, that was the same mm-hmm. theology. So it, the human meat, all I'm saying is back on the menu in the Asian worlds. Yeah. Mm. Is this not terrifying? Yeah. But it's exactly the things that's going to be happening in the last days. And just think about the atrocity of ISIS is what they they go through the whole Middle East and what all they've done as far as killing people. Yes. Killing them alive. You know, when I say alive, torturing them yeah. until they're dead and everything like that. And, of course, the the cannibalism that goes along with that, the rape, torture. And, yeah. and it all boils down really back to um demons mm. i mean demons cause us to to do things that we normally wouldn't do and having said that now i'm thinking about um i seen a uh interview between uh walters that does the walters world i forget yeah. his first name waters world waters world uh-huh. and he was talking to us uh, uh sandra huckabee mm-hmm. and talking about some of the, a few things in the news and one of the things he was shown was a, a video of these young girls like eight or nine years old whose mothers have put them into this video against donald trump and uh sexism you know uh all this stuff that's been in the news lately but these girls are dressed in the vagina hats that that they did with the uh anti-trump movement and stuff and these young girls just eight or nine years old dressed up with these hats on and stuff just uh disrespecting the office of the president of the United States. And if, I mean, if you're not raising a whole nother generation that's being disrespectful to the, you know, that's a pretty high office, I think, that needs to have the respect of people. Yeah. I, I mean, you know, through the years, there's reasons that it doesn't have the respect of the people. But, you know, it's like having a bad pastor and then another pastor comes. You hope that the next pastor is going to be better than the first pastor was if he was a bad pastor. You just right. don't dis- discount all the pastors in your life after that. And I think it's the same thing with the presidents. You have had bad presidents in the past. doesn't mean you discount the office of the presidency as foolishness, and then you don't respect that office. But yet you're teaching a whole generation to be disre- disrespectful to authority we see it you know with the police officers and stuff sure you have bad police officers that's right and you have to discipline the ones that are bad but that doesn't you know i had someone talking uh, uh tell me years ago when uh some of the ministers had their their falling away um oh ministers are so bad nowadays and stuff and i told them you know for every bad one you show me I can show you 10 good ministers that really have a heart for God and love God. Yes. And I think it's the same thing with, uh, well, I don't know if it's exactly (laughs) politics, but I believe there's a lot of politicians that get into the office with the idea that I can be different, make a difference than, you know. Fall into the same traps that everybody else who went up there. The power. They go up and get demonized. Mm. They go in there and they compromise and open Mm -hmm. the doors for all kinds of uh, Mm -hmm. bad, moral but if you start from, before decisions. they ever get in there, you start with the disrespects of the offices and stuff with through your children. First of all, you're teaching your children something that's not right. Yeah, that's you know. Just so, so since we're on that, brother Schaefer, you you shared something with me the other day that uh, was supposed to come out Wednesday, but I had did you catch any wind of the Pelosi? I haven't heard anything. Uh, what's the other guy? What, Pelosi and Schumer. Or, no, no, the uh, Badesca, B- Badesta. Mm. No, the one, <laughs> the one, that, the one that's the um, investigator. It starts with a W. Um, and he's the one that's the head investigator. Over. Mueller, Mueller, George that it? Yeah, Mueller. That's it, Mueller. George yeah. Mueller. Yeah. There's George a Mueller. thing that's out about uh, collu- Well, I'm gonna say collusion, but um, uh, George Mueller and Pelosi. Nancy Pelosi having an affair for uh, years. For years. And I'm talking about years and years because, you know, years. The only thing I did catch about that was they are scheduled to be stepped down in 2018. 
and that gives them a year to straighten out their offices before, oh, they, before leave. they leave out. That's mm-hmm. what I heard. Uh, but it's, it's there's scarce. a lot of people leaving. Yes, a lot of they, people are jumping uh, out. It's like uh, the swamp is being drained. The game yeah. is getting out. Yeah, they get they're going somewhere else. They're going over the hole, going out over the over the little bank, going to another little water hole. Get out, got to get out of this one. Yes, Donald Trump. He, you know, all it takes is. Uh, what was that? Swamp gator? Swamp? Which one do we, was that? You swamp people? Swamp people. Swamp people just shoot that little quarter size hole right at the top of the head. Yeah, little twenty two. Yeah, that's what that's all he's doing. A little twenty two shoot. Shoot him, Elizabeth. Shoot him. Shoot him. <laughs> shoot him, Troy. Shoot him. You you made an interesting um, observation. I believe it was last week's show. You were talking about um, the the sexual. My mind's going blank with, with what you call it, but the indiscretions and stuff through mm-hmm. Al Franklin and all that. And you said that you thought that they would give some up, yeah, to try to go after after Trump. Trump, yeah, and yeah. that's exactly precedent. what we're precedent. seeing this week. Yeah, but let me let me tell you, let me, y'all want me to tell you what I think happened? I think that they were setting that up to get rid of uh, Al Franklin. Mm-hmm. You know, say okay, we're gonna he, he's he's political uh, baggage. Got to get rid of him. Gonna get rid of whoever else uh, is on is on the Hollywood elite. Uh, right. Got to get going to get rid of them. So we're going to clean our own house so that when Trump pulls, watch this here, when he pulls Roy Moore in, then we're going to have a heyday with him. Yeah. Going to throw the same. They're going to throw the same thing. But what happened to Roy Moore? Roy Moore didn't make it. Yes. Mm-hmm. And so now you see what I'm getting at. So now what happens? This other guy goes, I can't remember his name. I don't keep up with the Democrats, Democrats that much. Right. So, uh, but he makes it in and, and it's only to 2018 because they're going to have another election. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's not in for the, uh, he's just finishing out a term. Mm-hmm. So that's what Trump just kind of like winks his eye. He just kind of like winks his eye going, yeah, we got yeah that's by, all right. We'll be, we're going to be all right. By that, be this time right. next year, there'll be a whole lot less in the swamp. Exactly right. And Roy Moore won't even be thought of, but they were going to mm-hmm. set him up bringing Roy Moore in. And then getting him to uh, have to jump ship too, and saying that's all right, Dem- and y'all doing it then, then we need to do it to Donald Trump as well. But it shows you how much Trump. corruption is there on both sides of the aisle, mm-hmm. and it, and it's also everywhere. it's everywhere. And uh, there's a there's a, a prophecy I listened to by the prophet uh, who he's an Indian. He, <laughs> can you do you know his name? Would you please say it for us? I can't. Okay, I can't either. Yeah, I heard but, it several times. Yeah, but he's got another one out. He's got one out now about Donald Trump. I sent you a copy of that. Okay, I didn't read it. Yeah, uh, I didn't listen to it. Yeah, and uh, he's talking about Donald Trump and the God has placed Donald Trump here so that he will stir the bottom of the cup. Ah, he says yeah. there's sediment in the bottom that is so corrupt it's unbelievable, but it's been covered up. Mm-hmm. And he says that God has put President Trump in office to stir the cup and bring the contents of the bottom to the top so we could see it and mm-hmm. judge it. And if we'll do the right thing. As Americans, as Americans, we'll do the right thing. Then a lot of corruption that God is angry with. Mm-hmm. For God is angry with the wicked every day, the Bible says. Yeah. And a lot of things that's angering God against our nation, we can deal with. And then God can turn around and begin to uphold America and strengthen us again, which is my prayer. And by the way, there is the DOJ is reopening or, or at least investigating more into Planned Parenthood. They haven't reopened any cases yet, but they are looking in closely at all the things that the Planned funding Parenthood has, has changed the funding, the funding has, has already changed, changed. Yeah. but now we're talking about looking to see if any crimes oh. have been committed about selling body the parts. body parts mm-hmm. not just for research but for profit because but you know I, see i what i i mean i'm gonna interject this statement here yeah in alabama we had a democrat win and i and here and here's the point i want to make for all those who were blue dogs out there is that yeah you had a democrat win but do you really realize what you won with it wasn't someone over here who may have have messed around with women or young Mm -hmm. whatever but this person here when they go into office their philosophy is this here here's what they're going to say and they're and they're going to bring about legislation to stand in this area that we believe he believes that man that was just elected believes that it's all right to have abortions and to the very last moment that a mother can say i do not want to have my baby and then therefore at eight months nine months when the baby's just about to be born you stick a drill in its head and you you suck Mm -hmm. the brains out of it i mean that is the democrat philosophy so yeah you say oh yeah we we won yeah but let me tell you what you put in that's right you put in something exactly what god speaks against that's right Mm -hmm. that makes sense oh yeah so it's not a matter of me looking at 
that we have one man pure and another man pure. I'm going, if you put this, I mean, it's just like President Obama, what he said. He says, if you live, let me be president, I will fundamentally change America. Mm-hmm. And let me tell you how fundamentally we're changed. He changed it. Here's fundamentally. You go down here to Target right now. Mm-hmm. And Target right here in, in Aiken. Mm-hmm. See, and you know, that's where I get controversial. You know, as long as I didn't stay in, if I didn't say the name, mm-hmm. and I ain't going to say the name. I ain't going to say Target, and I'm not going to say the name. <laughs> go Don't to, say Target. Yeah, I ain't going to say it. Don't say it again. Go to stores. We'll call it Market. He wants to fundamentally <laughs> change America. Go to stores and then see where they have. Uh, uh, transgender bathrooms. Anybody can go in any one of the bathrooms. Yes, that's right. That's fundamentally mm-hmm. changing America. That's what he was talking about. Mm-hmm. So the more you let come in, the more you say, I'm going to, and, and the, the Democrats said, I'm fundamentally going to go up there and change all this stance that they have for, um, uh, uh, you know, the sanctity of life, which is, mm-hmm. y'all do know that's just coming up in January. Mm-hmm. Well, this sanctity of life that we believe in, that Democrat don't believe in. Mm-hmm. Y'all do know that, right? He don't believe in that. He's not going to get out there, and he's not going to march against that, mm-hmm. or he's not going to support that. He's going to support Hillary Clinton, who believes what? Well, abortion, abortion on demand. Right? Abortion on demand. Yeah. And, you know, I, you know, and that's just what I can't get. I, I just don't understand is that does, does Christians not have their head screwed on straight? Mm. They don't see. They don't see it. They, they just hear. they just see they just see red green. I mean red blue. That's all they hear. Democrat Republican. They they don't look at the issues that God looks at. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and abortion is where God's heart is offended the greatest. The most innocent of our civilians are being ripped from the shelter that God made for them mm-hmm. and placed in the arms of murderers by the permission of moms and dads. Mm-hmm. That is an iniquity on everybody's hand. That blood is on everybody's hand. And blood has a voice. And it cries out for me. And God. today, let it, me tell you, I was so sick today. It just this made me sick. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was going through some stuff, getting ready for our show, and uh, I saw a doctor with a baby in his hand. Get on down. It was the size of his hand. My hand's a decent size. Mm-hmm. It was the baby f- was still alive. It was mm-hmm. an abortion. Yep. All the body parts were there, and the baby is squirming. Yeah. In the doctor's hand. And it's just seconds before he's going to murder the baby. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I saw the baby. The baby was the size of his hand, and he was it, that baby was struggling. Yeah, for and life. here's a man that's just going to kill it. Yeah, it. Yeah, that made me sick. Yeah, so it made that, me and, sick in anger and and heartbrokenness at the same. I don't time. see. I, listen, I don't see dollars. I don't see color. Mm, I, I don't see, see Democrat. I don't see per- red, green, purple. I don't see that. I see that's murder. I see a baby. You know, and God, and every pastor who supports any politician. That who supports, supports ab- abortion, mm. God will judge you. Yes, he will. Because you are not steering God's people in the right direction. And if you will stand with anybody just because they're your color, because they said they're going to do something that's going to help your bottom dollar, and you look at the money that you're going to save or the promises that they keep is going to help you, and you don't see the bloodbath that they're bringing exactly. to give you that money, if you don't see it's blood money, yeah. That's what it You're is. going to pay for that. Yeah. But we don't need to talk about this. You know, we'll offend somebody. We don't want to offend nobody. I don't want to be contrary. Come into January 1 <laughs> of 2018, there will be a kinder, gentler Henry Schaefer. That's my New Year resolution. Are you going to be kindly, kinder, kindly to the unborn as well? Kindly, kinder, and gentler. Will you be Amen. gentler to yeah, the I'm unborn? Yeah, I'm not going to talk about it. Will I'm you stand say, for those who have no voice? I'm not going to say nothing about it. We're not going to be controversial at all. Will you fight for those smallest and most innocent <laughs> civilians in America? Or were you throwing your towel with the rest of those who no, just gave up and gave in? When, no, I probably. That's what it sounds like. The swamp doesn't. It? Sounds like the swamp. Sounds don't. like the swamp. We don't want to yeah. get cleaned up. We're not going that. We're not mm-hmm. going that road. But you know, if we've offended you, then you need to repent. If you're connected with an abortion, uh, you have a spirit of murder. If you've aborted your own child, and you need to get that dealt with. You, re- I'm serious now. God will forgive you. He's not trying to condemn you. We're not trying to condemn you. We're trying to show the world and our listeners the horror How do we get that on is this? in. I don't know, but it's good. We're trying to show the world the horror that is really in our back door and we looking around the world talking about how bad it is and yet we've legalized abortion and yet we keep voting people in who's going to continue abortion Mm -hmm. and we got a president trying to stop it let me tell you what let me tell you why the stock market's up let me tell you why all this stuff is up and everything man the reason why it's all up is because like the prophet said that that you have a man in there who is stirring the swamp Mm -hmm. and when the swamp is stirred People are jumping out, 
it's cleaning the mud, the water's still murky but it's getting cleaner yeah all right and so it, that's happening and as long as um a, a, a nation exalts god right then mm-hmm. you're going to see prosperity you're going to see things like that in a positive fashion that's what we're Amen. seeing here uh for for the past so i don't know yeah i'm not going to be contrary Amen. i'm not going to be well, uh well, tell me what you was going to say and i'll say it for you well i'm just saying in the past we didn't have that i mean mm-hmm. we had exactly we had our we had our white house lit up with rainbow colors yes exactly and we've had all kind of things going on we had a president that we called every gay that came out of the closet all the football players all the basketball players and congratulate them and wouldn't do anything about christians being murdered overseas would rather let the uh, isis go and kill all of them wouldn't send them any help and, yeah, what I, and here's what i'm trying to tell you no we're, we're going to go get our brothers and sisters mm-hmm. yeah. we're going to send them in we're going to send our people in and you're not going to cut no more of our people's heads off amen yeah. that's it no we, we draw the line right here it's just like going into the jewish camps you know uh in the world war ii said so, no once we find yeah. out it's going on we come in and get you well, that was another thing on. Um, You're being controversial. You know that. <laughs> Is it? I don't want to be controversial. On that video I was telling you, I watched with That's the little a demon. girls. That can be a demon. <laughs> it could be. Uh, <laughs> with the little girls, they would. Uh, he was ta- bringing up another video of Obama, and uh, Obama saying that. The reason that the stock market and stuff is where it's at now is because of his administration. <laughs> well, that's what they said about uh, George Bush. <laughs> and the reason then, why it was so bad was because of George Bush's mistakes. <laughs> and then he went on to say, you know, talk about Hitler and uh, 60 million people dying under Hitler. We need to be careful. He didn't come out and say it was, you know, Trump is a Hitler, but he was trying to indicate that Trump is a Hitler. But, you know, when you start looking at things, you start understanding um, the tactics Mm-hmm. You know, right now, over the last several months since Trump has won, um, sexual accusations has been that that has been their thing. And people say, well, they don't they don't work that way. I'm sitting here. I'm thinking about Obama uh, because I'm from Chicago, I'm from Illinois. And the very thing that brought Obama in to office was a sexual allegation against the running mate of uh the Obama took over for the guy that was having sexual uh, accusations. accusations made against him, and he comes in as this hero. So they use GOP uh, was saying, you know, look at this guy. That's his wife was actually one of the Star Trek uh, ladies or something, and said, look at his morality, and you know, he needs to, to something needs to be done. Um, so right away they dismiss him and they bring obama in in the last month now somebody might say you know well that's kind of the opposite of what they're doing now but i believe that it was planned for him to as you talked about uh sacrificing franklin in them i believe that that i I don't remember the guy's name that was running for the office of congress in in illinois but Al Franken. Uh, mm-hmm. No, I, well, this was a different right, guy. Different guy, one, right. Mm-hmm. I believe they had him running with the idea of knocking him out at the month or so before the election, putting Obama in that nobody knew. Um, I knew I, I was from Chicago and absolutely knew nothing about All those humanitarian Obama. programs he was over there and you, yeah. you didn't see it happening? Knew nothing about him, but, <laughs> yeah, but he comes know, in the last month. and. But, you know, but here, here's what I have found out is that there is – it's like playing – it's like playing a ball Mm -hmm. and um was it phil necro do you remember phil necro i don't think so phil necro had a a knuckleball okay okay he was was a knuckleball thrower and so when he came when he came to bat i mean to pitch what could you expect for him to do uh knuckleball Knuckleball. and the thing was that i mean that was his Mm -hmm. forte and they really watched the the balls that he would throw because you didn't want to get a little scratch on it or something and make the ball dance Mm -hmm. you know what i mean because it didn't spin or anything it just danced through the air but what i'm saying is that you knew that when he came out that was a game you're going to start watching for the knuckleball that's what he did it's the same thing when the the democrats or the republicans have have an election y'all watch this here is their knuckleball you ready for it yeah that this person here has sexual promiscuity they've been uh, unfaithful uh it doesn't matter it does not matter who it is on the republican side is that that is their knuckleball and the, 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 jo- roy moore donald trump i don't care who it is mm-hmm. yeah. that is that is what works 
Mm-hmm. You see what I mean? And Phil Necro was the one they bring take him out there. We're gonna get him out. We're gonna throw the knuckleball, and and that knuckleball is equivalent to the uh, sexual promiscuities, mm-hmm. or they've been unfaithful to their wife, they've raped, they've murdered, mm-hmm. they've had sexual allegations and all. Fifty and, years ago, yeah, 50, forty years ago, and and that's, and that's what happens. They take the narrative. Mm-hmm. It's the narrative of the whole thing. But all I'm trying to say is, can't people be smarter than that and know this? Mm. Or is, does not people not see the knuckleball coming? The propaganda machine is good at hiding the, knuckle, exactly. the knuckleball. And I'm standing there going, y'all, it's Phil Negro. Mm-hmm. Negro. He's going to throw a knuckleball. Amen. Here it right. comes. Oh, it's going to be a fast, but Amen. no, it's going to be a knuckleball, you bunch of dummies. Amen. And there is one one individual that really cares a lot about making sure that people understand. And matter of fact, I believe we have a commercial that we probably should run for that gentleman. Uh, as Pastor gets it queued up there, he supports the station. And yeah, supports Brother Lee Moore. Moore. Lee, Lee Moore Pool Services. You and you're listening to 99.9 WUCCFM. Contact me for all your pool needs at 803-707-2258. Thank you and God bless. All right. Thank you, Bill, for reminding me of that. Amen. I know he supports the station. He may not agree with everything that is being said, but I know he cares enough that he wants people to have a, a, a view of the world. Yeah, and he wants people to hear a voice of truth mm-hmm. in a world that is filled with a bunch of lies. And, you know, we lean way right, but he's far to the right we could ever see. Yes, he he's is. He's out there. <laughs> he says he tethers off to the Bible and he, he jumps, jumps out to the unknown. To the right-hand side. There <laughs> we go, to the land of the supernatural. And we appreciate him, too, yes, as well. Yes, we do. And friend. we appreciate all of our listeners who support us in any way. And, and, and thank you for listening, you know, and telling your friends. Tell your friends about 99.9 WCC, the voice of truth, and how it's blessed your life. And uh, get them turned on. We need some support. We need you to help us in the new year. And... Uh, Come on, get on board with Project C or Special Edition End Time Revelation. We hope that we are helping you and uh, that you can start seeing through some of the smoke and mirrors that the world is throwing in front of you because everybody is pointing to the natural. They're pointing to see what Trump has said, what Trump has done. And they're looking at Erdogan. They're looking at Turkey. And so are we. But behind all of that, there is a spiritual power. Mm -hmm. And, And I know it's God when everything is focused on Jerusalem. That that little tiny speck of land is being fought over by the whole world is in an uproar about that. So is is it because of people or is it because the spirits that are in the world are coming together? They're coming together. The Mm -hmm. forces of good, God and all of his angels and the forces of evil, Satan and all of his imps and all of his demons. They're meeting at Jerusalem because that's where the great event. Mm -hmm. It's planned to take place. The battlefield is not in America right now. The battlefield for all of the earth is right there surrounded around Jerusalem because the Messiah is coming back. Remember what, remember, uh, you and I were had a discussion. We talked about how that this, um, Jerusalem edict about moving the, the capital or moving the Embassy. embassy to the capital there. And they always say in the same sentence that this does not affect the peace plan Mm -hmm. that's happening there in Jerusalem. Right. But at the same time, when the Palestinians, and here's what's in their mind when they're thinking about this, they're saying, West Jerusalem, Israel control. East Jerusalem, Palestinian control. And wait and see if that's not the peace plan that they come up with. Huh? Trump is supposed to unveil his peace plan here uh, soon, very, soon. And don't think that that's not it. I believe it's it. Yeah, I think that's it. So here's what we're saying. Here is here it now. We now, brother. I'm not a prophet. Mm-hmm. Make sure I'm not. Make sure I let them know. I'm not we a prophet. We do run Project Seer. We do do Project Seer though. So we look at this here, but we're looking at what a lot of other people are saying about this. Yes, it's kind of like look here, smoke and mirrors, or like yeah, it, we, we recognize it as the capital, mm-hmm. and we are moving our embassy there all along. Here's our police plan. Let's divide Israel, the capital of uh, Jerusalem, up mm-hmm. Jerusalem. the west side controlled by israel the other side controlled by the palestinian everybody's got a the the, their home everybody's happy clap clap we all go to heaven a little rowboat clap clap trump is master of the deal exactly part of the deal so y'all heard it here you understand what i mean we're hearing this big thing about it being moved to Mm -hmm. uh from tel aviv to jerusalem Mm -hmm. there's something more behind it than just that i believe that's exactly right I, Mm -hmm. i i feel that that is exactly right and that he can he can bring the deal, it, and the Israelis would, be, would say, yeah, you're our friend. You're coming here. You're a big supporter mm-hmm. of us. We're not afraid that you're going to leave and us. And who did he send over there? Jared 
Is Kushner. it Kushner? Kushner. His son-in-law. His yeah. son-in-law. That's yeah. the one that's kind of like brokering this thing. Yeah, so he's doing what Daddy wants him to do. Uh-huh. He's saying what Daddy wants him to say. Mm-hmm. That's why he didn't send somebody over he don't trust. Mm-hmm. And, so and, I, and he, isn't he a Jew? Is he? He's Jewish. Okay, well, that's yeah, even he's better. he's Jewish, yeah. So how how much? So And there's the other thing, because here is also what that prophet says who dresses. He's Indian, got a long beard. You yeah. Know, the, yeah, y'all figure out how to say his name. But he also said that Trump was going to that America was going to betray Israel by getting them to divide the land. He says that an ally, God told him an ally, was going to come to Israel. You, you, you watched it. I watched it. Wasn't it good? That was awesome. So yeah. he says, and he, this guy was right about the uh, I'm telling the, you. the flood that came to Houston, Texas, mm-hmm. right? So it was Houston, right? Did I say that? Yeah, yeah okay. right, you did. Okay, all right. So the same prophet said that a trusted ally of Israel was going to get them to broker a peace deal that was going to separate Israel and that God because of that was going to separate the country that that peace deal came from which will be america and that god as we split jerusalem god was going to split our country now think about what we said at this remember when i said this here go back to august when the eclipse came across yep from left to right you know it was like this is it a dividing line between our countries north and south Mm -hmm. and and then if you look at what's getting ready to happen over there if they do divide the city, I wonder how it would be divided. East, west, north, south. It would south. probably be east, west. Mm-hmm. Same thing happened to us. Wow. Isn't that amazing? That ain't funny. No, it's not funny, but it's, it's already it's happened. It's amazing. Yeah, it's it? amazing, yeah. And when so. you say divide, do you think it would be a peaceful division or you think it would be a, a war? Are you talking about in Israel or in no, America? In America. Uh, I think it's going to be a physical separation of our land. Mm-hmm. I believe that because that New Madrid fault is is it does run uh, north to south. I but passed over that. Yeah, I, I passed over mm-hmm. it several times. If you go out west, you're going to pass over the mm-hmm. New Madrid fault right up the Mississippi River. Mm-hmm. And they say that if that earthquake ever hits, a uh, major earthquake ever hits, it's going to divide east from the west right down the New Madrid fault. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying, you know, I'm not saying that's exactly what's going to happen. I don't really mm-hmm. know what's going to happen. But uh, the prophet has spoken. So other you prophets think it have won't spoken. be more of a physical land separation i'm looking as it as a land separation because that's what we're doing in israel if we broker a deal they've got to give up their land they lose half of it mm-hmm. so i think that'd be the, the exact repercussion sad who sundar there you go try to pronounce his name it's a Sadu, good one sundar salavarja mm-hmm. salavara savara savara let's do it yeah prophet from india this guy you know i listen to a lot of his stuff and he's right on you know, I can't say I know anything that he missed. And at this point, he's been right on a yeah, lot of stuff. I would say if there was somebody I'm going to listen to, I'm going to listen to him. I would, too. And until I see where he's he's missed it, missed it out. Yeah, anybody can get it. off in the flesh. Mm-hmm. Anybody can start listening to the news and then think they heard from God, according to the news. But uh, this guy has said some things I had never heard. like he has a TV. <laughs> he doesn't look like he knows what one looks like, does it? But anyway, so we're just talking about a lot of things here today. But a lot of things are going on, and the focus is on Israel. If you don't know what's going on in God's heart, look at Israel. It's the apple of his eye. Mm-hmm. And there's so much round and surrounding. Why is everybody so surrounding in this little piece of land? Does it really make – and you say, oh, but it's, the, it's, a, it's a conflict. There's bigger conflicts than that around the world. That's right. That involve more people. What's, yeah. the, what's, the, what's the deal with this place? I really, hey, I had somebody really make some comments on our uh, – I, I did a teaching the other day on uh, – Gog and Magog War. Uh One of the things they said, I disagree with your Gog and Magog War um, synopsis there. I'm going, okay, well, you know, everybody's got a right to an opinion. They can have their own opinion. And the thing is, is that one said, okay, well, the Gog and Magog War could not be before, um, could not be before. Rapture? The rapture time or before Israel, yeah, before the seven years of tribulation because they're thinking, they're saying, okay. um, Peace treaty? Uh, it's not uh, living in a land of peace with unwalled cities and things like that. I'm going, the, you know, it's not in a land of peace, unwalled cities, and it's almost like they are shocked that the the Muslim countries are coming into them. I'm going, and, and here's my response. I'm going, don't they live in a city now that's unwalled? Yeah. I mean, Jerusalem's always got walls around it, but it, in, in virtually that, they don't have any walls. They the do have a wall. Don't have they walls. do have a wall dividing the Palestinians. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like their, bo- their borders, mm-hmm. uh, and it's not, it's kind of like I know they're always on heightened awareness mm-hmm. that something's going to happen, 
but all of a sudden it's like something um you know comes into their mind like then 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 you come down you know then it's going to come down anyway they were just saying i dis- i disagree with that well let me go let me go ahead and add add this to it i do not believe that the Ezekiel 38 and 39 war is the battle of Armageddon. No, it's not. At the at the end where Jesus does come back riding on a white horse. I do not believe that's that because the Bible talks about that for seven years. Seven years they'll be gathering bo- bones. Up. For seven years they'll be gathering bones, and for seven months they will be burning the weapons. Mm-hmm. So here here is the, the thought of that. Going into the millennium, you're not going to be burning weapons. You're not going to be gathering bones. No, that's not going to be happening. Right. But that can be happening at the beginning of tribulation where you're burning weapons mm-hmm. and you're gathering bones for how long? Seven years. Yeah. That Entire you're gathering time. the bones up. And that's supposed to tie, what is tile tie stick around it or a little, a little yellow caution flag, whatever. There's a bone right here. You got to come get it up and take care of it. So More nowadays it's going to be like dropping a, uh, a locator. What would you call it? One of those uh, GPS GPS. They, mm-hmm. they got them. Beep. They got these tiny beep. little rye size. You just so drop it doing? right there. We're bone picker uppers today. Yeah. Beep, beep. That means you get. I got a bunch. So, so got all these things are. <laughs> bag of know, bones. When I see what's going on right now, when I see Turkey that we used to be the caliphate capital saying, come up here and they're all going there for a meeting. Probably uh-huh. happened yesterday. Hello. Something's happening. I y'all. believe we're closer, y'all, to that war happening. And the end time coming. I think that's why the saints are experiencing such turmoil right now mm-hmm. uh, in want people wanting to give up or people not wanting to move forward or not really saying, why are we talking about this here? It's just, mm-hmm. just one more program. You know, it's kind of like losing focus. Mm-hmm. You lose focus on things that are very important. Uh, and I think that's where we're at because the closer we get to war, mm-hmm. I mean, really, the demons are heightened. The demons are where they're stirred up. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, they know what's happening. I mean, they, you don't think they don't have con- you don't think that they don't have communications in the spirit world. Oh, uh, exactly. And you don't think they know the Bible. They know mm-hmm. that if that temple gets built, mm-hmm. it's a sign that their kingdom has just a few years, and then Satan will be bound a thousand years. Yeah. I told my church. I said that. Uh, I said this uh, Wednesday night. I said the spiritual forces are gathered because mm-hmm. the devil wants to stop the Bible from coming to pass. It's a- Mm-hmm. It's and the God and his angels are bringing their pressure in to make the word of God stand and come to pass. Yeah. Because if Satan can stop the building of the temple, he can stop the progress toward the end and right. his demise. He knows he's going to be cast into the prison. He knows he's going That's to be cast into hell. That's why the Dome of the Rock sits where it sits. It, yes, exactly. You know, he right. built that place right there saying that the only way, and he and, and the the eastern gate is walled up. Right. Mm -hmm. In Jerusalem. And that's the gate that Jesus will come through Mm -hmm. when he sets down on Mount of Olives. So it's walled up like you're not coming through here. And it's also the Dome of the Rocks. They're like, no, you're not going to rebuild here. Mm -hmm. Exactly. He's put his spiritual war. But here's the thing. Here's what I see, Steve, is that, yes, he's he's holding things off in that area. So that doesn't happen. The prophecy doesn't happen. But it will come a um, a watershed after he realizes that the timeline is now this much. This is all I got. That's what great tribulation is, great wrath and great fury. Mm-hmm. Because he knows he only has a short time, right. and he comes to wipe as many people off the face of the earth as he can to take them to hell with him. That's correct. Do you know what I mean? So does that make great sense? Great wrath, great fury, because he knows his time. is short. Is his, and he knows he's got seven years of tribulation. Mm-hmm. He knows the Bible better than we do. Mm-hmm. He's been around thousands of years, and he was a much more intelligent being than probably will ever arise that's to the reason in this why life. God, that's why the scripture says God puts a hook in the jaw and drag them down, mm-hmm. not Satan. Right. It's on, time, it's on God's time frame. That's exactly God's right. time frame. Well, as George Bush said, he has a strategy about it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I don't remember saying that. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, what about uh, we that? Still got about, we still, let me say how much time. We still got about four or five minutes here we got. Yeah, we about four so we can here. we can kind of surmise some things that are mm-hmm. going on, and and that's the fact that Israel is a boiling pot right now, really, mm-hmm. literally a boiling pot. And the Muslims around the world, I watched them in India. I watched I saw, them. Uh, mm-hmm. Where are these other countries? India. Uh, is it Bangladesh? I saw some. Yeah, stuff Bangladesh, there. and from around the world are protesting in their streets, mm-hmm. and they're not anywhere in the Middle East, y'all. Yeah. we're talking about around the world. Muslims There's are major everywhere. Protest. Yes. How many billion? One billion? One and a half billion? I don't Muslims know. Muslims in the world? 
one and a half billion, I think something like that. That's a lot of people. That's too many. That's a lot. Man, they, 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 they need to be saved. Jesus will Jesus save them. Jesus save them all. Jesus will save them. He, he sure comes that none would perish mm-hmm. and all should come to repentance. But they are the they are some of the usher ins in the end time scenarios. And also uh, Pope Francis. Y'all, we ain't got enough time to start on Pope Francis. <laughs> but Pope Francis is opening the door to the Muslim religion. Yes, yeah. They say that the Pope says we have one father. Yeah, listen, listen. Here. Go we, ahead, bro. Let's, 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 if we, it's going to be controversial if, now. No, no. If this is it, let's do it. Let's do it next week. We'll, we'll play it on something like that. We'll Ooh. talk about, listen here. What, uh, because I did a, I what, I did three three teachings on Wednesday night, Bill, about mm-hmm. Pope Francis. Uh-oh. Wait a minute. Watch this here. And the, um, what do they call that? What do they call that? The uh, Protestant Reformation. Mm-hmm. He says the Protestant Reformation is over with. Right. That they believe. Kenneth Copeland agrees with exactly. him. Exactly. Exactly what I'm saying. Do you being controversial mm-hmm. now? So, I but, named no, his name. No, but let's talk about it next week. Let's talk about if you see what's happening in the Middle East, let's talk about how the religious deception and the one world government and the false prophet has to get everything in order so they could be one world religion. How about the comment that came through when they were when the Pope when the Pope had uh, uh, two Muslim world leaders come to the Vatican, mm-hmm. and while they were there meeting in secret with the Pope, they found an asteroid in outer in outer space that was huge, a rock asteroid, and guess what? Science named it. Uh uh-uh. uh The beast. Oh really? The beast, when, when Pope was meeting, and what does the Bible say? There's two beasts mentioned in the book of Revelation. One of them is the false prophet. Mm-hmm. And when the false prophet is meeting with the Islamic world and kissing the Koran, kissing the Koran, the Pope has kissed the Koran and blessed it mm-hmm. and said, well, we are brothers. Okay, when he was doing that, a comet came and NASA said, you know what? That looks like the beast. Mm-hmm. And they named it the beast. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I like Next all this week. stuff. We'll talk about that stuff next week. We'll be on good, firm ground next week when we talk about that, won't we? Yeah, we'll have some good stuff. You might want to throw in next week, too, that Pope Francis uh, is revising the Bible. Oh, uh, and did you know? Uh, what, can, I'm, gonna have to hold, I'm about to bust now. I want to go. Yeah. You better, you uh, okay, gotta, I'm going to say one more thing, and I'm going to leave Pope Francis <laughs> until, until next you week. You got one minute to bust. Okay, listen. He says there's no longer just a trinity. It's four. What's, what would you call it? Mary, four? Mary, Mary, he Mary. He added Mary he to added the trinity. Mary, yeah. He said it is God, Mary, Jesus, Holy Spirit. Yeah. Oh, All right. I hadn't heard that. I'm out. God bless you. We'll see you yeah. next week. <gasps> Mic drop. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're going to talk about next week. Well, everybody, I've been your host, Henry Schaefer. It's been a whirlwind today. And as I get ready to get all my information here, you can, uh, God bless, what am, it's God bless you as you continue to serve the Lord is position yourself with a blessing. Cause let me tell you what, it's coming. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. God bless. We'll see you later. Thank you for tuning in today. We've been your host, Henry Schaefer and Steve Hall. The end times are here. Anything is possible. Are you ready? Don't miss the next episode of special edition in time revelation.